has gone in the opposite direction. He's such an egomaniac. Mm -hmm. He is so uh, focused on the out by the hour and by the day and uh, his own, uh, you know, importance in the whole scheme that he uh, is embraced something that's going to take him down. Because mm -hmm. uh, I was there, I was in Washington in the early 70s when Nixon was elected by a landslide in 1972. He won, you know, I think it was something like 500 electoral votes to 28. He won a huge popular election victory. Mm -hmm. he, he was invincible. The stock market was at an all-time high. Now here's the point. 18 months later, the stock market was down 37%. Mm -hmm. 18 months later, Nixon was basically put on what I call the Dick Nixon Memorial helicopter yes. uh, and you know, uh, sent out of town uh, for his last ride. So when the market goes down, the Republicans who have been basically uh, hiding along the ditches and keeping quiet are, are going to be, <laughs> come mm -hmm. out with guns blaring. We needed a disruptor to mm -hmm. sort of throw his body into the gears and, and stop the machine and uh, at least create uh, some disorder in Washington. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing and I think that's good. But on the other hand, for all these supporters out in Red America who thought that he was, uh, Red right. State America, who thought he was going to save the day, that uh, Trumponomics, whatever you want to call it, is going to make uh, America great again, that's nonsense. He mm -hmm. has no program. His program is to borrow and spend and, uh, you know, have uh, unnecessary uh, uh, trade wars and border wars and so, so forth. So maybe all it wasn't just a rookie mistake then? Maybe it was intentional? Oh, I think it was a rookie mistake. Yeah. I mean, I think Trump has no clue about politics. Mm -hmm. He spent his whole life as, a, you know, a speculator and real estate developer, and he knows how to borrow a lot of money and then mm -hmm. uh, somehow blame someone else when the problem uh, finally uh, emerges. Uh, I think he's just sliding by the seat of his pants, playing it by the hour, and by every day he gets up and tweets whatever is on mm -hmm. his mind. Uh, so he's a he's a. Uh, disruptor mm -hmm. but he's a, you know he's a chaotic disruptor he's not a strategic disruptor mm -hmm. well you've gotten to the second half of your book title you've addressed the fantasy of MAGA but what about the undrainable swamp now it's interesting prior to your interview I learned that Washington DC wasn't necessarily built on a swamp yeah. per se yeah. so why is it referred to as this undrainable swamp well it's undrainable because if you go across the Potomac there is a swamp that's where they built mm -hmm. the Pentagon and I say the deep end of the swamp is on the other side of the Potomac. It's the military industrial surveillance complex. It's the 800 billion that we're spending massively more than we need for uh, a legitimate defense. And Trump, uh, because he uh, doesn't really uh, have any view on anything, got sold a bill of goods that the military needed a massive increase in his budget. He gave him 80 mm -hmm. billion, which is going to be totally wasted. We can't afford. And it is really the military industrial foreign aid complex, the empire as I call it, mm -hmm. all of our far-flung interventions and occupations and bases and meddling in every nation in the world. That's where the swamp comes from. Okay, the swamp isn't because a bunch of people are getting food stamps. That mm -hmm. that's program can be reformed, but those people don't have any political power. They don't mm -hmm. even vote for the most part. The swamp is the money going to the Pentagon, to the State Department, to the uh, all of these propaganda operations like the National Endowment for Democracy and mm -hmm. uh, Voice of America and all the rest of this stuff. It's a total waste of money, but there are thousands tens of thousands of people in Washington living very high on the hog, making very high incomes, who have an interest in keeping the gravy train flowing mm -hmm. and therefore finding problems around the world for us to meddle in that are none of our business. What the hell were we doing mm -hmm. in Syria, Libya, Iraq, the Ukraine, Crimea, none of our business. Yet all of these people make it uh, uh, Washington's business. Mm -hmm. That's the swamp and that's, yeah. that's um, you know, it's two places, Foggy Bottom, what mm -hmm. they call Foggy Bottom, that's the State Department, and the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. So this is what you refer to in your book as the warfare state versus yes. the So I have to agree with David Stockman. Um, he has a lot of commentary on Fox News and some other channels, and he's completely right about the U.S. government and the spending. And although we need entitlement reform, <laughs> the biggest swamp draining that needs to happen is the military industrial complex 
and when it comes to cryptocurrency investing that is one reason why i am holding crypto assets because this debt that the u.s keeps piling on might cause a very <laughs> weak dollar in the future and you're gonna have to be able to hedge it with other tangible assets which is why i am investing in cryptocurrency um, as you can look at this one-year chart it's been terrible but for the most part, I'm not selling, and as we do hit new lows, I continue to accumulate, and it's not a large part of my portfolio, less than 5%, but I do see a time where stocks, bonds, and even real estate start to depreciate, and people will be looking for other assets that are not pumped up by the Fed, and at the end of the day, the U.S. has been borrowing way too much money, and most of the spending has been the military, and we hear about socialism and people trying to get free college and free education and they always ask how we're we gonna get the money how we're we gonna get the money but then when it comes to the military industrial complex which it's a very few select people who own large large companies that benefit from these endless wars no one questions why they're becoming richer and richer and why there's no cap on their wealth but then all of a sudden if we want to give free health care free whatever uh, it's a big problem so uh, I do believe there should be entitlement reform. I do believe <laughs> the U.S. has a lot of broken things, but the military sector definitely needs some sort of fixing. And if our debt keeps going out of control, um, it's eventually going to be a day of reckoning where the dollar goes to, uh, or even inflation will hit. And uh, depending on what you're investing in, I do feel like real estate is another good hedge against um inflation but that's why i do hold cryptocurrency and it might be another year or two of a crypto winter but uh, some of these trends and the way we're continuing to leverage and to continue to build up debt is just we're just asking for a massive bubble to be bursted and if you do some research on cryptocurrency the reason it was created was in 2009 because of the 2008 crash and uh we are able to cut, if you've been following the market, we've been able to delay this crash because the Fed has stopped raising interest rates and I'm sure there's gonna be some other programs to delay the crash, but eventually there'll be a day of reckoning, which David Stockman has been talking about. But let me know your thoughts and comments on this and I will talk to you guys soon.